Testing one, two, testing one, two. Kathy, let me know if you can hear me. I'll be right back. Hello everyone again and welcome to the new folks who are just joined us. We'll be starting promptly in just two minutes. Two minutes start time here at Online Creator Central. We want to welcome you to the presentation today. Uh, new folks that have just joined us. Uh, T1, uh, T12 Race, Evan G just joined us. Uh, Prosperous Trader joined us, Leon and others. This is Online Trader Central. Thank you again everyone and welcome. We do appreciate your time and your participation here today. We'll be starting promptly in just two minutes. Your host and presenter, uh, Melissa Armo. The title today, Make 100K a Year Shorting Stocks in Just a Half an Hour a Day by Melissa Armo from thestocksquish.com. Thank you again, everyone, and welcome. Hello everyone again and welcome. This is Online at Trader Central. We want to welcome you, welcome you to today's presentation, which will be starting promptly in about, uh, well, less than a minute. So we're going to bring out the percussion section and then the trumpets, the drummer, ready. And to the trumpet. Ready. Ready. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, the sound of the trumpets, you know that means it's time to begin. Please put your hands together and welcome our host and presenter today from the thestockswish.com. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you, everyone at Online Trader Central. Welcome. My name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called the Stock Swoosh LLC. Thank you for joining me today. Today, I'm going to talk about my favorite topic in the world, which is shorting stocks. I short stocks for a living. I'm a day trader. And you can short stocks for overnights, for swing trades, or forward trades as well. But I love to short stocks as day trades because they happen very quickly. And we're going to talk about the reason why shorting stocks can be so profitable to be able to make this kind of money a year, to be able to make $100,000 a year. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. You can also go to my website at www.thestockswish.com for more information. And as we go along today, if you have questions, you can just type it in the room. I'll see your question as we go along, and then I can answer it in live time. I have a lot of videos on YouTube. I've done a lot of calls on the market. I saw how bullishly the market closed today in the QQQs and the SPY. And if we have time at the end here, I can answer any questions about the market as well. So welcome. I have been shorting stocks in a bullish market ever since I created the system that I use to day trade. So can you short in a bullish market? The answer is yes. The reason is based on the quality of the pick. By pick, I mean the stock symbol that I'm choosing to trade. So whether you are in a, an environment that is bullish, in an overall market environment I'm talking about, or an overall market environment that is bearish, it really has to do with the pick, okay, with the stock itself. What I'm looking for if I'm shorting is weakness, and what I'm looking for if I'm buying something is strength. Because in order for something to fall, <clears throat> it has to get sold off. 
And in order for something to rally, it has to get bought. Now, this is a chart here of the SPY. This was from today. <clears throat> the market is getting bought. So the only way the market would have a look like this to it, okay, because we're in a bullish market right now. We never were not, by the way. And I talked about this in the last few webinars I've done here with Online Trader Central. But the market back here since the beginning of February, the first day of the month, has done nothing but rally. And so the market's getting bought. This is buying that's coming into the market. However, every day in here since the beginning of February, and every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I look to short stocks. Now, you can go long stocks, of course, but I prefer to short, and that's what we're really going to be talking about today. We're going to be focusing today on shorting and making money trading shorting. It's something that I'm very good at, and I think that no matter what you do, specifically if you want to trade the market and make money, whether it's a small amount of money or a big amount of money, either way your goal is to be profitable and you have to have a focus in order to do that. Not just to do that once in a while, I'm talking about to do it consistently. I think a lot of people get hooked on the market and the desire is there to make money trading. Like people will go and they will, they will have a good trade and they will make money on a trade. Uh, faster money than they've ever made in their life with less amount of work and then they will be what I call hooked. The market will hook them into participating, participating on a regular basis. But that trade that maybe somebody did that made money that was easy may not have been something that works consistently. The objective for anyone that wants to trade to be profitable is to be consistent. Otherwise, what ends up happening is over the course of time, you end up giving your money, your hard-earned money that you made in your regular job or saving to the market. So it's, the objective is always to be consistent. It's to be consistently profitable. And I am consistently profitable because I focus mainly on shorts and on one specific strategy, which we're going to talk about today. So if you can make $100,000 a year trading, you can do it as your full-time job. It's pretty much is enough money to support most people, at least, that live in the United States. I don't know where you live in the world. There's people here I know from other countries. But $100,000 a year is a good income. And the nice thing about it is that you can do it from home. Uh, right now, it is probably about 4 degrees outside in New York City where I live. I have no desire to leave the house today. Uh, and it is very, very cold, and the entire river, the Hudson River that I see from my apartment is frozen solid. So I am very happy that I do a job where I work from home that I didn't have to go out of the house today. And as you can tell from my voice, actually, I've caught a cold just, be, just from going on the elevator. Just from going on the elevator in, in my building, uh, because there's so many people that live in my building in Manhattan, everybody's sick. Most people have to go out and have to go to work and have to get on the subway, and there's germs everywhere, okay? I'm really lucky that I don't have to go out and traipse around in the snow and the ice and the cold and drive. So working from home is a convenience, and it's a convenience in the winter if you live in the Northeast. The other nice thing is that you can do it from anywhere in the world. So you don't have to live in the United States to trade the U.S. stock market. You can live anywhere. Now, depending on your time zone, you may have to calculate the time of the day you sit down and trade the U.S. stock market opens at 9.30 Eastern Time and closes at 4. I don't trade until the close. I'm looking to trade in the morning time, which is what we're going to talk about today and focus on as well. But you can be anywhere in the world and trade it. As long as you have a computer and an internet connection and a brokerage account where you can actually take a position, an equity position in the market, you can trade anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter where you are or where you live. So you could go on vacation. You could live in the U.S. and go on vacation in a foreign country and still trade on vacation. Of course, I don't know why you'd want to trade on vacation, but if you would want to, you could, essentially. And it only takes a few hours a week. Again, I like to focus on the morning, which was what we're going to talk about today. So how can you make $100,000 a year trading? The first thing I want you to, to ask yourself if you're here is to be honest with yourself and ask yourself, what is your mindset? In the last uh, week or so, I realized this, that a lot of people's mindset in reference to trading, I don't care if it's day trading or swing trading or core trading, if you have ever placed a live trade in the market, a lot of people's mindset 
is fairly negative. So if you are embarking on this, on this road, on this path to be successful trading, then I want you to be honest with yourself. You can write it down in a piece of paper next to you now, or you could just think about it in your mind. What is your mindset? If you had to be honest with yourself, what do you really think about trading? And what do you really think about the market? If you can't be honest with yourself, you're going to go through some mental battles. So the best thing you can do is just be honest with yourself. It really has to do with what you believe. And if you want to move forward from trading, if you're not profitable, or if you're just break even, to being profitable, you have to do what I call a reset. You have to reset your brain. I talk about this a lot in, in my class, in my main class, I actually talk about the brain and how it works. Your brain is something that you have control over. You actually can program it. In fact, your brain is so powerful that not only can you program it correctly to be successful in reference to trading, you can do it with other things as well. Like if you want to even lose weight. Uh, our brains have something called a, uh, a set weight for our bodies physically as far as our weight goes. In other words, if you've ever if you've ever gained weight and you've been if you've gained weight and you've been at that weight for a really long time, I don't know if you've ever noticed this or if you've tried to lose the weight then, it's hard then for your body to lose weight even if you exercise and diet because your brain weight then, your set mind weight then has changed. And you need to reset it. You can do this. It, it takes knowing how to do it. It's the same thing with being successful. So let's just say you started out and no one is born and successfully trades the market. You're not born one day and start to trade and are successful. Most people, what happens is they start to trade and they lose money. They're lured in by the market, like I said. They have some good trades, but ultimately they're down. Then they get a negative mindset. You've got to get out of that. You have to actually reset it. Uh, and, and I'm teaching people to do this. It's extremely important because otherwise you're not going to be able to move forward because your brain and your mind is so powerful. And the belief system that exists for most traders is that trading is hard. But I'm here to tell you if you know what to do, it's actually easy. If you believe it's hard, it will be hard for you. And therefore, you will have a challenge within yourself to reset your brain to move forward to do it easily, effortlessly, and successfully. So, you know, again, we're so powerful as human beings. Our minds, our brains are so powerful. You actually many times are working against yourself. Your goal might be you want to make money in the market. But then in your mind, you're working against yourself, feeling like it's hard or challenging or feeling negative. And this is something I could talk about a long time. From way more than an hour. It is something that I go into detail about in my in my gap class, which is very unusual to talk about in a trading class. But I find that it is very significant if you want to be successful. And this is not just in the market, but I find that it has a big, big piece of what to do with people in the market because what happens is people start out and they may start out making money, but then they fall down and then they're losing and then they get into that pattern in their mind and they have to do a reset. And we can talk about this more at the end here if we have time. Ultimately though, success in the market is about skill. It's really not about luck. Every once in a while I get a train and it goes to the dream target really quickly. But I wouldn't even call that luck. It was skill that I happened to take the trade and be in the right stock at the right time for it to go to the target with me in it. Okay, So even that really I wouldn't consider luck. It's really about skill. To be successful as a trader, it is not about luck, it is a skill-based career. To be able to make $100,000 working from your house, you know, that's skill. All highly paid careers are skill-based. Physicians, musicians, attorneys, all these people have skills, okay, and they make, make good money. You need to have the right skills and knowledge in order to succeed. The interesting thing about trading is that people either, one, don't realize how important the right knowledge and skill set is before they risk money in a trade. Like people will take a trade just on a whim or even watching something on a television show or getting a tip on the internet or just going into a trading room trial at some place where they don't even know anybody and they don't know the strategy or system that the people do and they'll just risk money on a whim. 
Or number two, they think they have the right knowledge but really don't. This is what I have encountered speaking to a lot of people that have traded the market. They think they have the right knowledge, that they know a lot about trading, but the fact is that they really don't. And how do I know they don't? Because they're not making money. So are you specific enough with what you're doing? It's like the market, the stock market, the U.S. stock market is this vast ocean. And if you're not specific enough with what you're doing, then it's going to be challenging for you to be profitable on a consistent basis. This idea of flipping from thing to thing to thing really doesn't cut the mustard. It's, it's like you can't be a jack of all trains and make money in the market consistently. You, you just can't. You have to become a master at doing one thing consistently. And that's where you see the rewards. <laughs> and that's where you see the money. Okay, that's where you see the $100,000 a year. Now, what do I mean by specific? Part of the equation of this being specific is one strategy that you would focus on. Now, the strategy that I happen to focus on is gaps. Here's a chart. This is a chart of CAG. This is a gap. The stock actually gapped on Friday. <clears throat> you can see this here. This is Thursday night. It closed at 36.40 and opened the next morning here around 35 something. So the stock gap, this is the strategy that I would look to trade and play on. It also had a gap today. Today is Tuesday. The market was closed Monday. This was Friday. The stock closed here on Friday night, and it gapped today on Tuesday. So what part of the being specific has to do with the strategy? Now also, which what we're going to talk about, and I said earlier, is this idea of shorting. Because if you shorted CAG on Friday or you shorted CAG on Tuesday, you made money. Now, it is about the focus, as I was saying. One individual can trade the market successfully as a career with a dependable method. So the method is in the strategy, okay, which I just talked about was gaps. In order to reap the rewards that the market has to offer, you need a quality system to follow. What are you going to trade every day and in what direction, for example? The central structure to trading results must be a strategy with a solid foundation that is based on accurately reading price action. The other powerful factor in being consistently profitable is having an edge. And this is what I'm going to talk about today. It's shorting because shorting gives a trader an edge. This is one of the reasons I'm very successful, actually. Now, I can read longs, but I prefer shorts. I prefer them because they move fast, which we're going to talk about, but I prefer them because it's something that not many people can do well. Many traders don't know how to short. And not only that, many traders won't. They won't even try to short. And even of the ones that do, many people that trade the market stink at it. They are terrible at it. So where does that leave you? Okay, well, you know that now there's something out there that exists that you could do in the market that many people don't do well. Many people don't do, and they don't do well. So you say to yourself, well, maybe there's something here I could, I could figure it out. I could do this thing. Now, <clears throat> when I started trading, I didn't realize this. I'll, be, I'll just be honest with you. I didn't realize that many people didn't know how to short. <clears throat> In fact, it didn't really dawn on me. I'd say it was a couple of years after I was shorting that, that people weren't good at shorting. And actually, not until I really started my business, I've been trading for seven years. I only started the business two years ago. I've been shorting the whole time I've ever been trading. I've always loved to short. Not until I had the business did I realize that not hardly anybody even shorts. And actually, even in the last two weeks, my broker told me something about shorting that hardly anyone that's at their firm shorts. And I was flabbergasted. I said, oh, my Lanta. I mean, it is really true that most of the people that trade the market don't know how to short or don't short or don't know how to do it or stink at it. So I really have an edge that I do this. And not only that, it's not just that I do it, it's that I'm really good at it. Okay. So when you have the market, let's go back to this picture here. 
you have a C. You have a C of all these things that are going on. We're going to talk about what a short is, but if you see the C and you're trying to catch a fish, okay, you're, you, you have to be very specific, otherwise you're not going to catch that fish, okay? See the difference? And every day when you get up, like with this keg, you just got to get that one fish, and that one trait, that one stop, that one short, that one move, because that's all you need. You just have to do it consistently every day that you get up out of bed, every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now let's talk here specifically about who shorts. Some insiders indicate that it takes a certain type of a person to short stocks. Many short sellers have been depicted as pessimists. I wouldn't consider myself that, but this is a definition from Investopedia. Who are rooting for a company's failure, but they've also been described as disciplined and confident in their judgment. Now this is a better way I would describe myself. I'm very confident in my judgment when I look at a stock to determine that it's going to fall. So. When red comes into a stock, it's selling and shorting. Sellers are typically what? Wealthy, sophisticated investors. Yeah, I guess I would consider myself that. Hedge funds, I'm not a hedge fund. Large institutions, that's not me. I'm a day trader, well, that's me too. So when you have people that are shorting, they're one of these categories here. Hedge funds can short, and so can institutions. Short selling is the selling of a stock that the seller doesn't own. I'm explaining this in case you don't know what a short is. Again, many people don't understand this, so I'm just going to go over this. More specifically, a short sale is a sale of a security that isn't owned by the seller. Like, I don't own outright, you know, uh, shares of CAG, for example. But it's promised to be delivered, okay? When you short sell a stock, your broker will lend it to me. I go in and I press the button to short, and I am pre-barring it from the broker. And this is how it works for anyone. The stock will come from the brokerage's own inventory, from another one of the firm's customers, or from another brokerage firm. The shares are sold, and the proceeds are credited to your account. Sooner or later, though, you have to close the short, so it's called a buy to cover. So you take the short position, and then you cover it. Okay and then you return it to the broker. It's like I'm saying to Mr. Broker, I'm going, I'm, I'm betting almost, okay, that if I short the stock and borrow it from you at a price of $10, I'm betting that if the price drops, I'm gonna buy it back to you at $9.50, and then I'll make the difference, which is 50 cents. Okay, this is really how it works. It's a very simple concept. It's just a lot of people don't understand it, even people that regularly trade the market. Now getting back here to the CAG, <laughs> if you wanted to short CAG, you press the button in your short account. You have to have an account where you can short. How do you know that you're going to have to check with your broker or you set up an account with a broker that allows you to take a short position and you would be betting that the stock price would go down from where you would enter it at the price point of the short. So if you are entering the stock, let's just say here at the high of the day around 34.60, 34.50 something, you're betting that the price is going to go down underneath where you got in because that's the only way you're going to make money in a short. Okay? And that's what it is. That's all that it is. Now, what happens in shorts? What happens in a short action is fear and panic. So, getting back to what I was saying earlier about this idea of Hold on one second, it looks like I lost everybody. Can everybody hear me? I was talking there. I just realized that I lost connection. Let me know if you can hear me. No idea what happened. Let me know what the last thing is you heard me say. Yeah, that was weird. The last thing that I was talking about was fear and panic. Was that the last thing you heard me say? 
Let me know. Okay. Then it only happened for a split second. That was very unusual. But I, I told you we're having we're ha we're having a storm. It might have been the internet here. <laughs> okay, good. At least I saw it. Just plop in the room. Everybody can hear me. <coughs> okay. What I was talking about was what happens in a short. What happens as a short is fear and panic comes in because it is selling action. Okay. So you make money to in a short position because of fear and panic that comes into the stock that creates selling. So when red happens in a stock, and I'm just saying red, you could have your candlesticks. Let me go back here and look at these candlesticks. You could have these candlesticks set up to be black for bearish bars. I have them as red. It's the panic here because the stock price is going down. And there's a fear and panic going on. So that's what creates the momentum in the short. It's fear and panic. The idea of making money to the short side is that you are sensing, okay, that the fear and panic is going to come in, in the stock that you happen to pick to watch, to know before it happens to take the short position because it doesn't benefit you if you take it after the fact. After CAG has gone a dollar, two dollars on the day, after you see all the fear come into the stock and the panic and the drop, you, you can't short it then. The move has happened. So the idea is to find this, which is how you find the strategy tells you, which is the gap, that it's giving you the inclination. It's giving the clue. It's the clue that the fear and panic is going to come into the stock on the day. So I have a strategy that I look at before 930. It tells me that XYZ stock pick, okay, is going to have panic and fear come into it today that is going to create selling action, which I'm going to short, that I'm going to get momentum on. Why? Because, again, of the rationalization of the fear and panic. Panic sets in fast. This is why I like to short. This is also why I have an edge of the market, because these moves happen quickly. So the edge comes from being able to spot that the move's going to happen before it does, so that I can take the position before the move happens. You can't take a position after the move happens and make money. In reference to trading, this is day trading, swing trading, core trading, timing matters like a lot. Okay. You, you see this setting up right now actually in the market. The market's rallying and the market's higher. And a lot of people have actually missed this move that's already been going on long in the market. <coughs> because I thought the market was going to collapse. Or they thought the market was done moving higher, but it wasn't. And it's not still. <coughs> Excuse me. But it doesn't help you if you see it too late. So the idea of making money is you have to see it at the right timing. That's where the strategy helps. And the concept of shorting is good for the quick moves. And if you're a day trader, you want quick moves. It's a, it's a lot less stressful, actually, to be able to take a position in the stock. Well, it doesn't even matter if you're a day trader, even if you're a swing trader. If I take a position in the stock the, and it goes to the target quickly, that's a lot less stress and more fun than having to be in something for a long time. Yes, I have to know what to watch. I have to know what to look for. But if I can get in the right thing before that move happens and make the money fast, it's a lot better than having to wait. Now, I'm not a patient person to begin with, although I am, I'm gotten more patient now than I was even five years ago in my life. But I will tell you that even still, patience or no patience of your personality wouldn't you rather make money fast rather than have to sit for a long time? Of course you would, all right? And this is the benefit of shorting as well because stocks tend to go to the targets and have moves quicker to the downside because of the panic.
Because if somebody, for example, is long a stock, and they were up money yesterday in the stock. They get up out of bed today, and they are actually, well, let's just say they're still up. I'm not going to talk about crazy pennant. Let's just say they're still up, but they're not up as much as they were yesterday. Well, that will make them happy. And they will start to fear what if it keeps going against them. What if they are not up as much even now by 12 o'clock noon or 2 o'clock in the afternoon? And they say to themselves, maybe I need to get out of this now and maybe I need to take my money in this stock position. And they sell it. Now let me look at a question here. Uh, Tin Cup is asking a question. I'm going to read his question first in full because it's a long one and then I will answer it. So you're naked in this trade with a limited risk. Why would you do that rather than use options where your risk is limited? It only requires a fraction of the account size to get started that is required for what you're doing. First of all, I'm not, I don't have any unlimited risk, Tin Cup. I use something called hard stops. I'm going to show you that in some of the trade examples. So I have a fixed risk. It is not unlimited. I am never taking a position without something called a stop. I'm in the trade live on the day when the market's open, so I can put a stop in. It is a hard stop. That means if it goes over the price, I'm out of the trade with whatever loss that I decided to take at the position size. I never take unlimited risk. That would not make any sense. Now, could you use options? Sure. Sure, you could. I don't do that. You could learn my system and do options. I've never traded options. I've only ever done straight equity trades. But I do have people that have learned what I do and then used it for options. So that's your, your thing. If you like to do options, if you prefer it, if you feel like that's better for you, if it's more defined for you uh, with your account size and things like that, then yeah, you can do it. For me, I'm, I'm capable of doing it as a day trade. And my risk is defined, which we'll talk about. So, so I do it the way that I've always done it, actually. But I do have people that have taken the class, and, and they, they're doing it for options. And I've even had people ask me about doing this for futures, too. <coughs> but that isn't something I'm doing either. So there's a lot of uses for the information. Again, it's the idea of shorting. And you're shorting on momentum in the panic. And you want to really become an expert, as I was talking about earlier, by taking advantage of what you see. So this is me, basically, and this is a lot of people here that don't understand how to short. So this, you can have an edge doing this. You have to stand out. Otherwise, it's a C out there. I mean, it's a C. The market is just a big C. It's a big C of money, but you're never going to get a piece of it if you don't become an expert in something. So even if you've been trading for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, longer than I'm alive, Okay. You have, if you, you know, it doesn't even matter. You got to learn how to become an expert in something. Now, you're never going to make money consistently trading. So, you know, it's one of these things where very early on I pinpointed that, that fact that becoming really good at something was the way to go. And like I said, I just didn't realize at the time that I started trading how very few people short and how very few people are good at shorting. But it is something that requires a certain skill set. But I think as long as the market exists, it will always be something that stands out as something you need. Because for some reason, people don't understand it, even though it's very easy to understand, I think. And also, many people just don't like the idea of it. But you can see here where I was describing about the fear and panic coming in where there's no hesitation. There's no hesitation. When you're in a long position and you are down, okay, or there shouldn't be actually if you're smart because you'll lose more probably, but there is hesitation when you're going long. Like your friend might say, you love this stock or he loves the stock and he tells you and you think about it for a day or two and then the stock price, you watch it and it goes up and then you talk to your friend again and he already bought it and it's ran up a couple of dollars and you say, why didn't I buy it? 
and then you buy it finally later. Like you thought about going long for a couple of days, but it didn't take you a couple of days to think about selling out of your long position if you were already in it and you were up and then you weren't up as much or if you were up and you were down. See the difference? And I'm using this example of a swing trade, but the concept's the same even if you're in a day trade. So getting back to this, what is a short? It is when a stock goes down from selling action and shorting action, but it is in a panic mode. Okay, So you are, again, betting that the stock will fall in price, that the panic will come in. How can you tell it's going to happen in CAG? Because I'm looking for a gap. This is the gap. <coughs> and gaps happen in many stocks. But the strategy is what's going to pinpoint me if the panic's going to happen or not. So I have a method to find the gap. It is a 26-point rating system. It is a professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. That's how you know whether or not you should short CAG or something else. The philosophy behind the 26 points is to find stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, number two, big moves on the day, number three, early confirmation of my bias in the move between 9.30 and 10, and number four, precise entries with follow-through and a good risk to reward, which we'll talk about today as well, because that's how you're going to be able to make $100,000 a year. You've got to have a good risk to reward in the setups, and this goes back to what Tin Cup 2 was saying. You do have to have a certain amount you're risking. That's what risk to reward means. You're looking for a certain amount you're risking and a certain payout. So I use this 26-point checklist to trade. That's how I know what to watch. And the ultimate philosophy behind my system to trade is to analyze a large time frame, which is a daily chart. Okay, But I'm entering the stock on the one-minute chart, which I'm going to go over and show you today. The one-minute chart allows for high degree of focus and accuracy. Now, this is for day trading. You use the daily chart to make the decision for the stock pick, and that's how you get the good risk to reward. So why trade bearish gaps? Because of institutional money. They make gaps. This was QCOM. Now, this is a 15-minute. This isn't a one-minute chart. But I just want to show you, this is a gap back from the end of January. Where the stock had closed the night before around 70-something and opened the next morning here at around 65-some dollars. Do you see here the panic? Now, what created this <coughs> institutional selling? The stock fell $5. Now, <coughs> I'm not in this, in this. This happens at night. I'm in this once the day opens. Okay. And on the live day, the stock still fell more than $3. And you would short this. If this rated per the 26 point rating system, which it did. Okay. And again, here's an example of panic. If you see this on your scanner at 11 o'clock, or even here at 10.30, you miss this thing. So the idea is to find QCOM in the morning before 9.30 so you can get in QCOM here. So you can get this. Okay. But it happens because of large institutional money. Uh, Tin Cup is asking another question here. I'll just answer. <laughs> and anyone else that has any questions too. You can find gaps a bazillion places, Tin Cup 2. You can buy a scanner. You can go online. You could get them in your platform. It's like there's almost every stock actually gaps every day and the market, the market ETFs. But not every gap that happens, even to the downside, is something that you could short, just like not every up gap is something you could buy, because tons of things gap. So how do you know to get this one that it's going to drop $3 on the day? Okay. That's how the rating system comes into play. The strategy is a gap. 
But then you have to have a method to find the right stock to pick to short because they want all work down. Some will gap down. Like QCOM could have gapped down $5 and got bought. I didn't. I rated it. It was a good gap that rated for the 26 points, but you wouldn't know that unless you rated it. That's one of the reasons I created the rating system because there were so many things that were gapping. Just even to the downside, there's a lot of things gapping. And they didn't all work to continue. And then I had to figure out which ones were shorts and longs. So it's really about precision and detail because it matters. Accuracy counts in trading on all fronts, which is the quality strategy, the good risk reward, right entry, correct size, and proper exit. Being successful in the market takes detail and a certain level of precision, which I have. And you can learn from me because I trade on the one minute chart. The one minute chart takes precision. And detail matters. It can make a difference in you making a lot of money one day or losing, actually. So you have to learn what to do and when to do it. Like, for example, if you did the QCOM at the wrong time, even though it was a short, you might have actually lost money shorting QCOM, even though it was a short, but if you took it too late. So it's about having a trained eye. This is where the skill set comes in, where you are learning. You're training your eye to look at a specific thing. Even if you have trained your eye to read charts for 20 years, if you haven't trained your eye to read the right thing that matters, you're probably not making money in the market. A trained eye counts. This is one of the reasons I've called the market extremely, extremely well. And someone said in the room, actually someone that's done my class, that did my class a year ago, that I'm, I'm known for calling the market. I didn't even realize I had gotten a reputation for that, but I guess I have, even with my own people that have already taken my class and are training with me to call the market as well as I've been calling it. And the market is higher. How have I been able to determine this all along, even with the bearish month we had in December and January? Because I'm reading the price action in the gaps that are happening. And specifically, I'm an expert in shorting. Okay, So when all the red bars were happening here, and there were some bearish gaps in the spy, I was able to determine through the 26 point rating system if the selling action was enough to actually turn the market or wasn't anything to be concerned about. Like that would change the market direction, which it didn't. And you know, the market continued higher today. Now we have a couple other questions. Is your system more of reading price action than relying on indicators? I don't rely on any indicators, Michael. So the answer is yes, it's reading price action. If there was one system where you could rely on an indicator for accuracy, we would all have it, and it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work because we don't have it. And the only reason that... <coughs> uh, the only reason that the market is something that has such high level of profitability for people that are successful at it is because there's a large majority of people uh, that lose money in the market and then there's a small amount of people that win. Again, to reset your brain, does that mean that you're going to think you're going to be part of the category of losers or does it mean that you are going to be part of the category of winners? Like, who are you? Are you a winner or are you a loser? You need to know who you are. That's why when I started trading, I don't want to get too off topic here because I, I have a lot to go over yet. When I started trading and I was losing, like at the beginning I was winning and then I didn't know what I was doing, but it quickly turned for me and then I started losing money. And, and then I, I felt like I was in bizarro world because I'm with always been successful in everything I did in business and it was like bizarre world that I that I was losing okay you have to know who you are and I knew I was a successful person and the very idea that I was losing money in the market made no sense to me okay know who you are are you a successful person or not it counts okay now, let's get back to this. Focus on where the momentum is. How do you know that? Because you're going to have the right information and the skill set in your brain to know it. 
Now let's go over some trades here because Tin Cup was asking about trades with risk and things. Uh, Tin Cup is asking again about why things gap. Things gap for lots of reasons. Earnings, news, a CEO gets fired. Kramer talks about it on his show. I mean, like, it could be anything Tin Cup too. Like, it could be anything, actually, that could make a gap. The market could gap down and, and, and stocks could gap down with market. Like a lot of stocks actually uh, gapped up on Friday with the market. Market gapped up Friday. Market didn't gap up today. Market gapped up Friday. A lot of stocks gapped up with the market. So there's like a whole plethora of reasons. Now let's talk here about cake. You were saying about the taking the day trade. Tin cup two was. Let's talk about this. First of all, this is a one minute chart, just so we know where we're at, and the stock gapped. Now, before 9.30, you're gonna determine if you want it short cake. You might wanna go long it, you don't, you don't know. You rate it per the 26 point system. And you determine it's a good short. So you take a short position in it. You short it here, and you put the stop. It is a hard stop. If cake goes over the stop, you're out, and you take the loss. Now, it didn't, and it went. The price of the entry was 48.42. Stop is over 48.85. Risk is 43 cents. So here's the risk. So you have to size yourself. I, I broke this down. Advanced risk is $645. The exit, and this is not the low of the day, it went another 25 some cents. It's 46.75. This is a really nice move. You could have made $2,500. This is real money, people. Okay? You would have had to risk $645. But this is a good solid trade. It's over three risk units, almost four, and it happened very quick. Why? Because of the panic. Do you see this here? Do, 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 do. So you are short the cake. All right. See this? Now, some people, and you can see this here, some people might have one who to buy cake. The stock had a big rally in here. This is a big rally. Right in the first 15 minutes of the day, did not make a new low here, started to rally again. How do you know you can take the short and hold it through? How do you know not to buy it here or here because of the rating system? Because there are some stocks that gap down and rally. And some people look for gaps to fill. How do I know this won't fill? I rate the gap per my system to look to short. And I want to see the short move because I want to see the panic and the selling fast if the stock rates per the 26-point system. If it doesn't, then I'm not doing cake. And in fact, cake might be a long then. The only way I know cake is a short or a long is because of the rating system. And the gap tells me that. I rate the gap itself. But a stock could gap down and rally. I'm letting you know this. Okay, It's the 26 points that tells me whether cake is going to be a short or not. And again, I like to short. That's just what I like to do. This is momentum. Do you see this in here? This is a beautiful move in here. Do you see this? The price in here? And it did go down to 46.50, so the stock got a $2 move in a half an hour. So you're looking for this every day. Now, in reference to an intermediate position, you're not advanced yet. <coughs> but you've been doing this for a little while. You risk $258. You take the same trade. You still make over a thousand bucks. It's a great trade. Okay? So you don't have to risk five, six, seven hundred dollars. Two hundred fifty bucks you could have risked in this trade and made over a thousand dollars. It's a common day. It's a good solid trade. Why? Because of the move, because of the momentum, because of the panic that came into the cake. Okay? So here do you see here, I have a stop in tin cup too. That means if this goes over that price, boom, you're going to lose $258. It's not unlimited. It's fixed. And even if you have slippage, it's not going to be something crazy. Like if it would fill you at 88 or something, it's not going to be something crazy. So you don't trade with unlimited risk. You have the stop in. Now, how does the time of the day fit into it? Because the time of the day matters for getting the momentum. That's how you're getting something that falls in a short that you're in, that you're shorting a dollar, two dollars into that morning move. 
Now here, let's look at the CAG again. This is a bigger chart here of the CAG. But again, this was one where you would get up in the morning, this was on Friday, and this was today, and you'd be rating the gap to determine if CAG, CAG could have rallied here. This was Friday. It didn't, but how do you know? The rating system tells you. And then you determine that you can short it in the morning before 9.30, and you're looking to take the position. This is the one minute chart in CAG. You're shorting it here. Look at this. Boom. And again, look how fast this came in in 10 minutes. Do you see here the panic? See this? But if you are waiting for your scanner to come up, you see this here after 10 o'clock. But this all happened. And if you know what to do and you learn it in my system, you'd watch the CAG, you would have gotten this whole short instead of this little rinky-dink move here. It's all about the right pick. Now, if you shorted this, the entry was 35.33. Again, a hard stop. It's 17 cents as a risk. On 4,000 shares, this is an advanced risk. It's almost $700. Eggs is 34.65. Again, this wasn't the low of the day of this. Okay? I do teach exit rules and targets in the class. Profit's almost three grand. This is a really nice trade. It's, again, a 4R trade, but it happened in 12 minutes. Where can you make this kind of money like this? This is, do you see here? This is the edge, shorting. Look at this, momentum, move. 12 minutes in the trade, you're out. $3,000 if you risk 700 or 680. Now, what if you didn't want to risk that much? Intermediate trade, it's the same trade, $255. You can still make over $1,000 in the same trade because you're getting the momentum. And this isn't even a dollar, but it's a good, solid move, okay, in this stock. So these kind of common days really gets you to the number where you're making, like I said, six figures a year. And this is a risk of $255. This is not crazy. And anyone that's day trading should be able to afford a risk like this once you learn my system and know what to do. This is how you have days where you make comma days, I call them, where there's a comma in the number. Now, you could have played CAG again today. CAG had a short in it. This is a five minute chart, not a one minute. You could have shorted CAG here. You were in this longer. It still had a beautiful move. This is, you just got out of it at the target. You entered it here, got out of it at 34, which was the first target, although it did go to the dream target today. It did go down to 33.65. <coughs> but if you shorted this here at 34.33 and exited the whole entire position at the first target, you could have made $2,300 risking $630. Bucks. This is a three-hour train. This did, you didn't even hold it all day, but you actually could have. This actually went to the full-on target on the day. <clears throat> if you risk $270, you could have made, again, almost $1,000 on this train. It has to do with the exactness, let's go back here, of the entry, the stop, knowing where to take it and the exit, but it did continue. Nick Nick is asking me about commissions. First of all, if you are an active day trader, Nick Nick, you have to get with a good broker that is not going to eat up your profits and commissions. If you're trading a certain number of share size per month, you can get good commission rates. If you're not, I have no idea what you're paying. But, I mean, there are places out there that charge ridiculous commissions. No one should be actively trading at those places, Nick Nick. So, it, you know, if you're, if you're active and you're trading volume, it doesn't eat up anything because you get better rates. And you don't pay per, uh, like, some places out there, like $7.95 a trade or $12.95 a trade or something crazy. I don't pay even remotely like that. It's all volume-based, okay? And the more volume you trade, the cheaper your commissions are. Because the broker wants to keep you. Because you're active. And brokers make money on volume. Volume, 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 volume. That's how they get their rates down. Like, the more volume that a broker has running through the brokerage firm, the cheaper, like, the pennies. Because you, you know it's pennies. Like, it's pennies that they're actually paying. Like, when you're paying 
I don't want to get too off track here, but when you're paying $7.95, like, they're paying pennies. <coughs> Just so you know. It's actually crazy. So let's get back to this here. How many gaps per week? During each quarterly earnings season, three to five quality gaps or more. And during non-earnings season, there's three to five quality gaps per week. A quality gap is one that rates high enough to train based on the 26-point rating system. So someone had asked me the other day about how many you know, gaps you get. There's some days you just you don't do any. You don't get a good one, you don't do it. It's about the quality. In the sea of the market, you're trying to hone down and pick a good fish. Remember, if you can't find any good fishes that day, well, then you're not gonna you're not gonna eat them. You're not gonna eat a fish that's half dead, or poisoned. Okay, you're looking for quality, and you need a plan for booking the money quickly, which happens in the shorts to the downside. So, in order to make six figures, you need the right business plan and the right risk to reward trades, which equals the results. Now, getting back to what I was saying, what's a good risk to reward payout? One to three on the low, four to six on the mid, and eight to ten on the high. And you do get trades like this, eight to ten on the high. Not every single day, but you get them. In the month's time, over the course of each month and each year, you get them. What this means is for every dollar you risk, you should have a goal of a minimum of three. Does every trade get to a three R trade? No, but many do. And some get to higher. And there should be a potential for even more if it goes to a dream target. For example, the CAG, $34 was the target on that today. Low of the day, I think, in CAG today was $33.65 ish. Okay. It was a nine cent stop, and the stock went like 80 cents. So there, and it was just, just a trade. Okay. But it was all about the entry, all about the stop, all about the right pick. Now, if you want to make $100,000 a year shorting gaps, your risk unit should be about $250. If you get really good, you could have it at $200. And, you know, you can get up to the point where you're risking more over time. But anyone that's brand, brand new, you should just start out with learning it. You can increase your risk over time once you prove that you can do it and that you're seeing the gaps and you're seeing the entries. But you can see here how even $500 a day ends up being over $100,000 a year. And $300 a day is $78,000 a year. $1,500 a week, I mean, that is so reasonable. $2,000 a week is eight grand a month. Eight times 12 is 96. That's basically 100 grand a year. $2,000 a week. I mean, if you are trading for 20 years, day trading, or 10 years, or five years, or six years, or three years, or four years, and you're not even making $1,500 a week, I don't, I don't care if you tell me you have all every indicator in the world, every Fibonacci, I don't care if you have taken 25 classes, you haven't learned how to trade. You don't know how to do something that's going to make you money. You can read all the charts in the world. You can know everything back and forth about every type of indicator. It doesn't mean a hill of beans if you aren't making money. Quite frankly, there's only one reason that I do this. There's only, there's only one reason that I ever sit down to trade. Yes, I do like it. Yes, it's fun. Yes, I like working from home and all of that stuff. But quite frankly, there's only one reason I do it, and that's to make money. And if I didn't make money, then I flat out wouldn't do it, okay? So if you are at a place that you have been doing this for a long time, and you think you know everything, you don't. Because you don't know if anything that's giving you an edge to really teach you how to make money. And my class, my system, my strategy, my method, shorting stocks, the way that I do it, actually teaches people how to actually make money in the market. That is why I have a successful business. It is why I'm a successful trader. So I can teach you how to make this kind of money shorting. I am teaching people how to do it. And I teach a class. It's called the Golden Gap Course. The Golden Gap Course teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. It's just you how to enter and exit the trade on the day. Okay, and that's how you make the money. It teaches you support and resistance at an advanced level, far beyond what any indicator would ever teach you because it is a skill-based method. And it teaches you how to trade in a very detailed manner so you become a good trader. And what do I mean by good trader? I mean someone that knows what to do, has conviction, can do it, presses a button without fear, takes the risk, and makes money. And that's what I mean by good trader. Someone can tell me they're a good trader, but if they're not profitable, then they're not a good trader to me. Okay. 
A good trader is someone that knows how to trade and can actually make money in the market. A good trader is someone you'd give your money to, to make money for you. So I use a 26-point checklist. I just go over it every morning of the stocks I look at. Now someone also asked me, is the class beginner or advanced? The class is advanced. Does that mean if you're a beginner, I couldn't teach you? No, I can teach anyone. Will you have a little bit of a learning curve if you're a beginner? Sure, sure you will, but the class is advanced. The cost of my class is $3,000. I wouldn't be charging $3,000 for a class that's not advanced information. Again, you will learn things from me that you won't learn from anyone else. And the way the person I am, the way my mind thinks, it's, it's advanced in reading price action. I have taught people that have never traded the market before that are brand new beginners, don't even know how to read a chart. They've asked me a lot of questions. I answer them. They learn. It's a good place to start if you come with me because you don't have any baggage in your head. And I'm teaching you from the nuts and bolts from the ground up. So either way, whether you're a beginner or advanced, the class is worthwhile. Know, though, that there is more than one step in the ladder for most people's journey. If you have been on this journey for a while and you're not making money, there's no reason to feel bad about yourself. Like I said, you just have to do the necessary things. Reset your mind frame. Learn something that's going to teach you how to make money. A lot of people are on different ladders and they're on different paths. I just want to see people be successful. And that means that sometimes you have to change your thinking. You can't be a jack of all trades and be successful with this and a master at none. There's too many people in a seat of the market trying to make it. At some point, you have to get on the right path if you really want to be serious about it. So don't let anything stand in the way of your success. It is really all about your mindset, and you can reset your brain. I'm teaching people how to do it. And remember that working for yourself is a great thing. So empower yourself today. I teach a class. It is a complete system to use to trade. It is called the Golden Gap Course. It is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Retakes are free online, and the class is online as well. The class is this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, February 21st and 22nd, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. The cost of the class is $29.99. If you would like to sign up, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. Remember, your path to success is the Golden Gap course, and this is a great time to trade gaps because it's actually earnings season right now, the rest of this month, and all into March. I also teach another class called the Trends course. This is going to be at the end of March, March 24th and 25th from 12 to 4. This is how to read long-term trends and charts if you're doing overnights. Class of this class is $9.99. And I'm running a special if you want to do both classes. You do the gap class in this weekend for February. And then you would do the trends class at the end of March. And you could save $499 if you sign up for both at the same time. So you could do the golden gap class and the trends class for one price, which is $34.99. So if you're interested, email me at melissaatthestockswish.com. It's still very early in 2015. You can still achieve the goals that you set for yourself this year. Think about the things that I said today about how your brain works and your mind works. And I appreciate everyone listening to me today. I know my voice does not sound like my normal self, but uh, I'm going to get better very soon. Any questions, email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. Any questions here left over tonight? Okay, you're welcome. Email me if you have any other questions. And thank you for coming, everyone. Thanks, Tin Cup. I'm taking my vitamins. <laughs>